Hello there, welcome along. This is The Green Room. I'm Eric Rano. You may know me, or probably not, from tipsquirrel.com. But don't worry, there is no Photoshop or anything during this podcast. And that's because this is The Green Room, the room you go before you have your chat. So this is just somewhere, as you can tell, just we're hanging out, have a drink, see what happens. So I'm going to in introduce my first guest. Then for part two, or number two of this series, they will then invite a guest and they will invite the next guest and so on and so on till we get to about six, maybe. I don't know. I've done no planning at all. But let's get on with this. Our first guest, it is, of course, the lovely Tiggs Rice. Hello, Tiggs. Hi. Where Cheers. are you, Tiggs? Cheers. What are you drinking there, Tiggs? Cheers. Um, I, am, I am drinking um, this lovely bottle of gin that you sent me. Yeah. <laughs> So a uh, shout out to JJ Whitley Family Distillers because his bottle of gin is delicious. <laughs> good, is it? That's good. Really good. It's, it's more really than violets. A whole gin thing, aren't you? You love the gin thing. Yeah, I'm a massive gin drinker. Well, I say massive gin drinker. I'm a massive gin fan. I don't get to drink much of it these days, but um, yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely is my tipple of choice. First thing I've got to ask you about, because mm. I'm, I'm obviously going to put your name on this. So you've recently got married. I do, yeah. Are you still get congratulations? Are you Thank still you. going by Tiggs Rice or do I call you something else? Yeah, so professionally I'm still gonna go as Tiggs Rice. Um I've spent too long building up the brand. Um but in uh, in my real day to day life I am Tiggs Reason. So uh Reason. Yeah, reason. Get the reason jokes in now. No, i <laughs> not a minute, but I'll turn under breath, it's gonna come. <laughs> do you remember those do you remember those chocolatey things? They're like uh the, the reasons they were called reasons weren't they yeah is it spelled the same as your name no literally reason is in r-e-a-s-o-n okay any particular yeah. um any particular reason for it <laughs> that's so bad that was the worst one <laughs> that was the worst one. i haven't done any more but i'm gonna <laughs> but that, that's just the first one so you went you went away to to get married yeah, we um, we eloped to uh, Glencoe in Scotland. Um, decided that we'd have a, a really small, sort of just just us and our immediate families came. Um, the weather was awful. It was amazing. Uh, we drove all the way down. It was about an hour down this ridiculous country path in the middle of nowhere. That's really only wide enough for one car, and we had sort of like five or six cars trying to get down this like really <laughs> narrow winding sort of off a ravine on the other side ledge. Um, nice. And it kept going and going. And at one point, because we hadn't been there, um, it, I'd literally, when we talked about eloping, had said, how about this place? And I'd literally Google mapped it, looked on sort of like, you know, you can see the little pictures um, on Google. It sort of shows you things that have been taken. Yeah. It's like, this spot looks good. We were driving for ages down this road, and I thought, oh, do you know what? Maybe I've got this wrong. Like, maybe this doesn't exist. And we just kept going and going. And then the it just stops. The road just goes dead. Um, and then suddenly there's a little car park, um, and it's by the side of a lock. Um, so, we, yeah, so we got married there. Um, oh. Middle of nowhere. It's, got, it's not going to be easy to pick a photographer, though, when you're a photographer yourself. No. Um, although saying that, I, I'd sort of pre preempted when we decided that we were going to get engaged um and i'd picked out a few of my favorites so i'd said okay right well you know we're getting married in scotland i love scottish wedding photographers i think there's something about the 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 landscape that they're in just inspires so much creativity and i was like well if we're going to get married in scotland let's use someone local who knows the area as well so i narrowed it down to about three different ones in said to James you know which one do you which one do you like and then we picked Neil Thomas Douglas um who's a friend of mine that I've known for a few years um so yes we were really lucky actually he doesn't live too far away from where where we eloped to so it was it it was an easier decision than I thought it would be um but there were <laughs> there were a few people that I think would have liked to have been asked so no. hopefully I've not upset too many people nah, <laughs> matter, does it <laughs> right, no, so no. now I'm being nosy. What's uh, what's in the boxes? I want to I want a guided tour of your room you're in. Oh, okay. So this is my office. I do all my editing in. Um, most of these, well, some of the shelves are filled with boring stuff, like filing, um, and then like 
boxes of like random. This is my uh, my geek drawer because um, apparently um, everyone in tech needs one of those. Um, and then there's like I've got uh, vintage cameras. Lovely. Um, so I've got a couple of these that I've picked this, up. This is Virgin on work now. This is Virgin on work. We're not going to talk yeah. about it. Um, I like I it. Have, Check this out. So instead of having like an advice book, yep. we had an advice pineapple. Of course you do. People could put their um their like wedding advice to us in it and it matches my studio, so it came in here. What was the best bit of advice you got? Uh well oh, that's putting me on spot. I, don't, I can't remember. Okay. Well, but the thing is, people were, people were drinking at the wedding and put a lot of rude things in there as well. <laughs> um actually no, do you know what? My favourite thing that was in there. One of my friends is a artist and she drew us a picture of the two of us together on one of the cards. So not technically advice, but I really like the fact that she spent probably a good 15 minutes of our wedding party drawing this picture for us. Oh. So I, yeah, I'm going to say that one. Personalised, wasn't it? It's nice. Exactly. Yeah. So I've got, I, I was thinking of questions earlier on. Mm -hmm. I was I, trying, to, trying to avoid sort of the worky things, but that's all I know you from really. But we have we have socialised properly once. You've, you've uh, seen drunk a couple once. of times, or they're mostly at work things where we kind of just go off and yeah make new friends. Well. Do you, do you, do you, we were at uh, Birmingham. And mm -hmm. I've been drinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if, if I'm going to put this on uh, YouTube as well, I'll put that photograph that uh, the great Tiggs Rice took on me. I'll put that. I'll put that just about here somewhere. I'll edit it in somewhere. Because uh, I'm proud of that, because you know it's not often I get such a talented photo photographer to take a photograph of me. So yeah. I was uh, properly drunk. I was trying to put a coat on that didn't fit me. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. The the uh, the bars of um, it, was a, it was a photography show, wasn't it? There's a um, I think that bar has seen a lot of uh, a lot of photographers drinking a lot of alcohol. It's not like me though. It's not like me to drink when I'm on a work night as it were but no i tried to behave myself it's fresh occasion wasn't it it was exactly. uh, I, I, I decided to, we've got a mutual friend that we were with that night and i i've spent a lot of time working with him and i've never and that's what i'm gonna say about that but that's the only time that i've ever got to really go out and drink with him and it's great it was nice i enjoyed it no it was awesome yeah i try and uh, try and keep on my best behavior on that one mostly because it's a four-day event um, and I tell you what, if you spent one night in the bar, the next day is always hard work afterwards. Yeah, I did, I did so, struggle that fourth day. I yeah, did. not surprised. Anyway, that's, that's work. <laughs> See, we've, uh, we've, we've been on to work. Uh, okay, so uh, I've got a list of questions, and they're all boring. I was mm -hmm. so proud of blah, 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 blah. But what's the difference between a, a frog and a toad? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I've got no idea. Is that... Um... That's, that's well, the best question I came up with. I told you I plan nothing, nothing. I don't. I don't know. Like I wouldn't know without googling. Would you? Would you kiss a frog? No, I wouldn't. And I tell you why. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to explain, but you can. No, I have a really good story. So um, it's exclusive. I drive <laughs> would not no, frog. Um, earlier this year, I was in Miami, um, and we went up to the Everglades, um, and you can go around and you can have a tour on the boats around the Everglades, go looking for um, it's alligators, isn't it, there? Um, yeah. We'll go with alligators. Um, and then afterwards, you can go and see this show. And there's this amazing, just completely nuts American guy who um, is like a alligator whis whisperer. But he also has other things in there. Now, I'd been pretty poorly, actually, while I was out there. Um, and we got off the boat and I was like, oh, do you know what? I need five minutes and then I'll come and join the show. But people had filtered in so quickly that I'd actually missed it. So they had to let me in through the secret back entrance to get into this show. Okay. And he pulled me out and was like, well, you're late to the show. Um, and he was like, because of that, you have to hold on to this. And literally just went like that in my face with a giant scorpion. Um, and I, I've never screamed so loud in my life. Um, but part of that show, they actually had frog or toad can't remember which one it is but right. it was you know those ones that the really big ones with the really big sort of necks that do the like ribbit sort of thing I um, I, don't know. I had one of those and the woman next to me um 
he made her kiss this frog slash toad and at that point I was like no no I'm out and like literally just like leading back as far as I can to just remove myself from the situation so yeah I don't know I don't know how, if it was a how was that or question or... the most inane question in the world led to an anecdote oh, that, you asked that, the question. That, I'm, I'm quite proud of it <laughs> did you ever get your uh, portrait done in Lego no you did I did uh, I thought, I've just seen it and it remind, reminded me that uh... no although I did go in the other day um into the Lego store in London and I was considering it um do you know what it is though it's the colors because gray white know. black and yellow yeah I don't know what color I'd, I don't know that you can get it can you get it in other colors because no. that's what they have in the store as well I'm not sure it's the one I saw something similar though on uh, on a website I can't mm. remember. it's it's the one where you get um all, all the geeky nerdy stuff mm. I, if I can remember I'll put it um, somewhere in the down here or something um because i was looking at mr me seeks christmas decorations earlier on okay I, I think why would you not if you can you should you know mr me seeks no been, oh my god i'm living in my own world <laughs> all right that's it takes rice thanks very much bye-bye uh, uh, he's from um i was gonna say ren and stimpy but that's not right i'm gonna swig a beer what i think about it is rick and morty Oh, okay, I have seen that. He's one of the characters from Rick and Morty. Okay. Um, okay. That was a bit lost on you, wasn't it? What's your favourite Christmas decoration? Oh. Um, you know those gin baubles that you can get? No. Like a bauble filled with gin. We live in different worlds, me and you, don't right. we? So, um, yeah, you can get baubles for Christmas trees, and they're like, like see-through baubles, and they've got bottles of gin in them. Okay. And last year I got bought quite a few of them. Needless to say, none of them still have gin in because they all went last Christmas. So if anyone wants to buy me a gin ball, ball like you're welcome. Uh, if not, I might replace them and just um, go with yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Is there anything you want to ask what do you me? On your Christmas tree. It's a good question. I don't have nothing to do with my Christmas tree. My wife always does Christmas tree, and it's up to her what she has. My mother-in-law. Bless her, we lost my mother-in-law this year. But my mother-in-law used to have a Christmas tree. And whenever she asked me, what does it look like? I'd say, it looks like the tinsel monsters, monster has vomited all over it. It was, you know, it was my worst kind of Christmas tree. I like them nice and subtle. So so no tinsel? No. What about, um, what's your opinion on that stuff that's like ivy that you can get that's more like foliage? I've got no opinion on it. I don't, I'm going to sound awful here, but I don't really care about Christmas that much. Oh. I know. I don't Thanks Eric. This was a good chat. Nothing. And in fact, if anything, it annoys me. Yeah. It you know, when it's just it's hanging up and you walk you walk down the hallway and you you're knocking yourself on it and oh my God, it's so annoying. <laughs> I like Christmas. I just don't like all the faff that goes with it. Do you know what I mean? It's just a lot of faff. I'm so bar humbug. <laughs> I'm not, because I love, I love Christmas, and this year is Christmas going to be special. Um, All my kids and my grandkids are coming around for Christmas dinner this year, first time, so that's going to be nice. So I'm really looking forward to that and the whole present giving and all that. Love it. Just all the faff, isn't it? And it starts now, and shh, although I do, today's Thanksgiving. We're recording this on Thanksgiving, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I see all the Christmas adverts started, and it's Black Friday, and that's about all that comes on telly for ages, and I get bored of it before Christmas. Have you? seen the twitter advert with john lewis no but i did hear about it it's it's worth a watch he's he is one of my favorite parts of christmas and he's got his own advert with okay, twitter oh because his name is john lewis isn't it yeah so he gets wow. all the um he gets all the john lewis well they're john lewis and partners now aren't they yeah. um, but he gets all their feed stuff so yeah um bless him it's it's yeah that guy is hilarious. I'm going to look for it now. I'll put a link somewhere. I can be asked. <laughs> I do like the Waitrose advert, though. I haven't seen that one yet. That's a good one. I won't spoil it for you. I like that one. It's worth a look. I've got a birch now. So that's the problem with lager. <laughs> I don't usually drink lager. <laughs> so, i tell you what I did. I bought a box of, of a selection. Mm-hmm. 
And so it's got two bottles of lager, which are, or cans of lager, which I'm starting now. Mm -hmm. lager. Get them one out of the way. And then it's got an IPA, pale ale, and a golden ale. It's from Beer Hawk, which I've never heard of before. But anyway, but it's got lager in it. So if I get them out of the way, but now I remember why I don't drink lager very often because it's Gassy. I'm like an old man, aren't I? <laughs> I'm the wrong side of 50 now, though. I'm, I'm entitled to it. I mean, yeah. I'm supposed to have yeah. an opinion on socks and stuff now. And socks. Have, yeah, like length of socks or. Oh, or socks. Or... I thought you said stocks. I was like, well, that's quite intellectual of you. Oh, no. I don't know. Do you understand stocks? I don't understand stocks. I mean, I know what shares are, but actually, I was literally thinking today, I don't know the difference between stocks and shares. It's, it's not something I've delved into. No, me neither. We should do at our age. More at my age than your age, because you're quite younger than me, aren't you? Uh, well, yeah. You're not school your age, but you are younger <laughs> than me. It's nice. I've that. seen some years, some. <laughs> Enough. Yeah, but you've done, yeah, you've done a lot in your little years, haven't you? You've got a lot done. Yeah. I mean, I still don't know what I want to do. Well, I think you're doing a pretty good job right now. Talking shit. Well, tip squirrel. Tip squirrel, tip squirrel did well for a while. It's not what it used to be, but I still enjoy it. And you've made a lot of public appearances and over the last, especially the last couple of years. Like That's true, that's true, that's true. Which, uh, you know, but I've always said I stood on the, the shoulders of giants. Uh, you were a contributor. <laughs> this is not good after two cans. Um, <laughs> you were a contributor for a while, which was nice. Yeah, yeah. But I've had a lot of good people come through our doors. Come yeah, there's some amazing people. Things. Yeah. It's good. And I'm proud of that. And, you know, sometimes when I think about how successful the people have been, I was saying, ah, oh, you know, if I would have tried harder or if I would have done this or done that. But actually, that's my role in life, I think, is just to get people going. Just, And I suppose that's why I'm a trainer or a teacher now, I suppose. It's sort of... I think it's one of your strongest skills, you know. Um, wherever, wherever there's knowledge to be given, stop it. Wherever there's knowledge to be given, you are always in that. And you've always been someone that's been leading giving that knowledge um and it's such an important role and something that comes up you know over and over in the industry you know it's, it's all well and good to have someone that gives you that knowledge but also giving back to the community as well and you know through tips girl and um things that you've done with adobe and your teaching and training as well like you you really are quite instrumental in that part of the industry oh stop it paid you a compliment <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But we're not supposed to be talking about work, but thank you. I do appreciate it. Always say thank you for a compliment. That's you know, somebody told me this about four or five years ago. You should always say thank you for a compliment like it was a gift to you, because that's what it is. And it's if you hard to take them though, isn't it? It is. But if you don't take them, then the person who's giving you the gift feels bad. Yeah. So uh there you go. Put, You're put welcome. That pineapple. <laughs> I would <laughs> I, when I woke up this morning I thought I know what I'm going to try and do today. I'm going to say pop it in your pineapple at some point today. And there you go. Managed Done. it. So Done. Nice. Good. Take that off your bingo list. Go to bed early tonight. <laughs> what games do you play? Well, as in um, computer games or just any type of any well, game? Well, I'm, I'm thinking I love a game of darts. Oh. Do you play darts? No. Do you want to play for I'm money? Hmm? Do you want to play for money? <laughs> I mean, if you want a sure win, then yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why I said it. That was that was the joke. Well, <laughs> although saying that, I was in Costco yesterday. Yesterday? Pretty sure it was yesterday. You know, they have those, um, they're like, it's like an arcade game where you can chuck the ball, in, basketball, into the yeah. um, thing and get the score. Um, yeah, literally walked up to that and went like that. It went straight in, walked away, looked cool as, you know I couldn't do that ever again. <laughs> that was a mic drop moment, wasn't it? <laughs> I did something similar the other day. I was at a, a local park. You may know it, uh, if I could remember the name of it. <laughs> but we were there with the grandkids, and uh, they got one of these hoops where the ball comes out randomly out of one. And the ball came over to me, and I, I went like that and missed by a mile. But at that time, when I went like that, I thought, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, you cool. Yeah. No, yeah. And they just looked at me like, oh, what a granddad. <laughs> oh, I'm so old. 
I feel I've I've got to the age now where I feel like I should tell everybody I'm old. Do you know what I mean? Nah, you've got you've got years yet. Yeah. Ah. Just write it out a bit longer. Hmm. So anyway, what computer games do you play? Because you say computer games then. Hmm. Um. Our, we play a lot of PlayStation. Um, yeah. We say I, we. Yeah, James and I. Um, right. Although he's got way cooler taste in games probably than I do. I very much like my platform games, um, like um, Little Big Planet or Lego Harry Potter. So I basically play all the games that are designed for children. I basically a big adult. Well, those um, Lego games are perfect for playing with two people, aren't they? They are so good. However, I'm a completionist, so I'm like, we need to get 100% of everything. We need to yeah. find every secret unlocked thing. Um, James isn't. He's very much a, we're going to finish the story, and then normally we'll move on. So um, I've yet to complete Little Big Planet 2 because I actually need someone to complete that. So I mean, if you're ever up for a Little Big Planet 2 day, let me know. I've, I've never played it, but I, I think spend the day with you, playing computer games. Exactly. No brainer, isn't it? Gin, lager, um, and also it's voiced by um, uh, Stephen Fry, or Hugh Laurie actually is the new one, so, you know. Okay, see, I'd, I'd go with that, Hugh Laurie, I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge Stephen Fry fan. No, did you watch House? I loved House. House, did you watch House? Yeah, it's one of my favourites. I, I agree, last series was a bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you need to end it now. Uh, but yeah, up to that point, really good. Hmm. Did you know the um the you remember the fire one yeah. near the end? Did you know it was did you see the documentary about it being filmed on the five D Mark II? No, I thought that was the one where the the crane collapsed. Well maybe it was. It's the one where they were they were trapped in the building anyway. Yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. They they wanted something that would film in very small spaces. Yeah. yeah good. Does this work? No, it's not, is it? Is this no, TV it's just to talk about cameras. TV it's always going to happen. <laughs> the, fo the focusing was difficult, wasn't it? They had to, had to put focus cards on everywhere. and I think that's quite quite uh, brave to, to do that for a, just a for a major TV program like that, to take that risk, but good on them. Yeah. Um, good. Are you into drones yet? Uh, I, I mean, I love drones. I haven't, I haven't bought one yet. I'm living my drone life vicariously through you and a couple of friends that have them as well. I think drones are fascinating. I love drones. I do, I, and and it's sort of because I came into and I know it's virgin on the work thing again, but I came into Photoshop from Premiere, so mm. making was where I was first before still imaging. So to be able to take a drone out and to reinvigorate myself with filmmaking, I I enjoy it so much, and uh, you know, being able to sit down again in inside Premiere and After Effects and having a little play, and and fall in love again with After Effects. Cause I haven't touched it for so long. Yeah, I've seen some of my crappy After Effects on Instagram, but uh, I've been having a little bit of a play. What um, what drone do you have? Do you have one drone or do you have multiple drones? I've only got the two. I have a. I started with a. DJI Spark. Is that the Mavic? Mavic? Nah, it's one below that. Tiny little thing it is. Right. And then I went for the Mavic Pro 2. Okay. Um, not long after that. That pleased the wife. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. She was chuffed. Sorry, she won't watch this. She won't watch this. Um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah. That, but I love the Mavic Pro 2. Uh, beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. Um, but I crashed it, and so it needs it needs repairing or replacing. No. I tell you what happened was I was I was videoing a wedding. Yeah. And I was all ready, and I'd done some practice up and downs because the bride and the bridesmaids were going to come out of this building. Yeah. Come this way, and then out and like that. Oh, we're talking about work. Um, no, it's drones. It's different. It's not work. From okay. for me, so. I, <laughs> I have a door further up the pathway, so. I was still in the wrong place. The drone was in the wrong place. So I had to get it up and away as quick as I could. So I sent it off and I broke the first order drone, which um, it's very annoying. I shouldn't really admit this, but I lost sight of it. And and it beeped to say that it was near something. And so I quickly went the wrong way and it went into a tree. Oh. Uh, it took me about an hour and a half to get it out of the tree. And uh, when it hit the floor, it broke one of the arms. 
ish. Oh, now I've got it. Absolutely got it. But, but you see, here's a lesson was that was obviously before the wedding. Yeah. yeah. But I'd got the spark with me. So while that was still up in the tree, I sent the spark off and now uh, got them coming out of the reception and all that kind of stuff. But at least you got the shot. Yeah, really nice one as well. I, I went straight down of them coming out, having confetti thrown on. Mm. Sure, it was a nice one. Nice. Anyway, mm. let's uh, move on. But are you, are you not tempted to get a drone? I'm so tempted. I'm really tempted. I think I'm at that point now as well where, I, I mean, I've invested in my cameras for years. And in the past, it's always been, I would, like, even last March at the photography show, I was like, oh, do you know what? Like, I'd really love because it's not part of my work. Um, it would literally just be for fun. Um, and I'm like, I do really want one, but it was the toss up between, do I get a drone versus I could really do with a new camera body. So I, you know, I had to go with the one that was for work. Yeah, but yeah. now that I don't need anything for a couple of years, I could definitely think the drone would be, the drone would be the next one on the list. So good fun. It's good. it'd be nice to have something to play with. Um, yeah, just have something a little bit a little bit different. What about puns? I do like a good pun. I, I like a good pun. Um, we bought James's dad a thing of um, bad jokes. Um, and it's so, there's like a whole, I don't know, there must have been, there's a lot of jokes in there. But we've worked out, or he worked out, that there's one a day right. um, from, we gave them to them as a, like as an extra thing, as a wedding sort of thank you gift. So we've, he messages us one a day, every day, and he reckons he can go past Christmas. So I find, so I find today's one. Yes, I'd like that. I cannot, I cannot vouch for this being good at all. <laughs> so today's one was actually um, bad. It's I think they're pants jokes. Pants joke one. What do you call a man with a paper bag on his head? I think I know this. Go on, I'll let you deliver it. Russell. Oh, yeah. And yesterday's was number 86. Why isn't the triangle friends with the circle? Oh, I don't know. He thinks he's pointless. <laughs> Every so often there's a really good one there. What, what do you call a man with a spade? Doug. What do you call a man without a spade? Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're, they're, all, they're all in it. I love those days. <laughs> Uh, what do you call a what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. What do you call a deer with no <laughs> eyes and no legs? Still no idea. <laughs> there we go. We should be the road. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. Uh, <laughs> right, so I did promise that um whoever does this uh I'm gonna call it podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is to be honest with you. Um I will give them 30 seconds ish to talk about something they want to advertise or they want to talk about coming up. Oh. So, uh, did I not mention this, dear? Um, you did. Uh, I hadn't prepared anything. That's right. But well, I do good, actually... Because I, neither have I. I do actually have some pretty exciting news. You, I don't know if I've told you, actually. So this might be a first for you as well. You tell me more when I spoke to you. Um, so, Jigs Rice news. So... Um, Gosh, next week even is my nine years in business. Um, so nine years I've been freelance now. And um, I mean, I don't know when this is coming out. So this might actually be the first time it's ever mentioned. Um, but I've been offered a book deal. So for my 10 year uh, business birthday, um, there will be a 10 years of um, 10 years of my work within the burlesque world coming out as a sort of like an art, like sort of coffee so table. I'm going to use the... the I'm going to use the phrase coffee table book. Is that kind of thing? Yeah, so um, it will be very um, f uh, photography, like picture heavy. Um, so, yeah, it will be a celebration of all the work that I've done over the last 10 years. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That, so how did that come about? Um, so there's a, a company called Working Class Publishing who publish um, amazing art books within my niche out in, um, out in America. And they have done some amazing projects over the years and some photographers that I really admire within my industry have released books with them in the past. And I thought I would try my luck and send them a message because they liked one of my posts on Instagram. 
And I was like, you know what? I, I would love, I would love for this to happen. Um, let me know if it's anything you might be interested in. So this um, isn't even you having to sit down and write stuff. You've already done it. Pretty much. I mean, I want to do some new stuff for it. Um, definitely, I, d I want stuff in there that people haven't seen before. But then at the same time, you know, I've got nine years worth of stuff already, and some of that work hasn't been published for various reasons. Whether you know, some some of the things we've held back because we wanted it to be somewhere special, um, or we've shot a few extra things that just you know never made it into the public eye. So, but I'd like to do a few more things in the next sort of six months or so that are special that can go in there and give people something new to look at as well. Lovely. Congratulations on that. Thanks. And it, it's funny, you know, sometimes you just got to ask, can you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think it's basically become my mantra over the years. If you don't ask, you're not going to get. And the worst that someone can say to you is no. Um, so, you know, putting yourself out there and, you know, you can ask. I've wanted two books for years and I did self-publish some years and years ago so I've got four four or five in my name anyway but obviously on a much much smaller scale um and yeah unless you put yourself out there you know otherwise you're just waiting for things to fall into your lap and you know if you can do half the legwork and at least put yourself on people's radars then yeah that's where I've, I've always failed because I just I can't be bothered things I'm lazy what can I say <laughs> it definitely falls into the camp of being um proactive rather than reactive and don't get me wrong there are periods of my career as well where i had like because of whatever's been going on in my life i i very much have been like kind of reactive and working to it but I, it's i don't know about you i find it really stressful working in a react uh, reactive environment where you're always having to keep up with demand um and definitely at this time of year as well it can be you know everyone everyone needs everything by black friday or Christmas or New Year or we need this by the end of the year whatever so yeah there are definitely times of the year where I'm not as proactive as I'd like to be um so it comes in fits and bursts I normally do about sort of one week one week in June and one week sort of in the first week of January and it's just like right come on <laughs> <laughs> well, why not it sounds uh sounds like it's working for you so it don't matter does it you obviously got it right so we can see more of your stuff. I'm going to just uh, flick over here on the on the big old screen here. Uh, so we can see more of your stuff at uh, tigsdrice.com. That's um, it's, it's an amazing site, and you know I've never hidden the fact that I love your work. Thank um, you. You are an incredible photographer. I've always said, you know, nobody commands light like you do and understands it. And I, I genuinely stand by that. It's a, it, absolutely incredible obviously the subject matter helps yeah um yeah but uh oh, it's extraordinary extraordinary work and uh well played thank you i don't know what that means <laughs> i will take it as a compliment i feel like i need a pipe well played well can you have a bite with bubbles please like one of those ones that you kind of go like this and then all the bubbles pop out that's it you know episode three pipe with bubbles if you if you don't, I'll be disappointed. I will now. Just just for you. So uh next time I see you in person, mm -hmm. that's gonna be at the Adobe thing. That this might oh, be yeah, next week. Is yeah. it next not next week, week no, after. Next week. No, it's next week. Next Wednesday. Twenty eighth. Okay, may not see you then. <laughs> Damn. I thought it was the week after. Are you sure? Where it's the twenty eighth. Okay, I mean it might be. Okay, yeah, because not it's not in December, is it? No, yeah, it's next Wednesday. Okay. Cancel whatever you have. Cancel it. Okay. Unless it's your anniversary, and then you let off. <laughs> I don't know when my anniversary is. <laughs> but this bit's getting edited out. Really. So that's that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So the next time we're going to see you in person is probably when you're going to be in Peterborough to take photographs of the pantomime. Yes. So we'll, meet, we'll meet up then. That's good. Um, for everyone else, go see Tiggs Rice at um, TiggsRice.com. But also, I'm wrapping up here, Tiggs. Can you, can you tell? I can tell, I'll yeah. I'll, 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 um, my voice. I'll, yeah, you carry on. I'll, um, I'll listen. You, stop away. Uh, you can see more at Tiggs, <laughs> TiggsRice.com. Don't forget that she is available for lots of uh, tutorials and stuff, aren't you? I am, yep. 
Um, yep. And uh, you do the photography farm as well, don't you, and stuff like that? Yep, yep. So um, I do workshops with Photography Farm, um, and there's some bits on there for some online training as well. Um, and then Digital Arts, there's a whole load of free resources I've written on there. And you can find some on Tip Squirrel as well. The odd one or two on Tip Squirrel as well, yeah. I was, I was right in there. Oi, do some writing. Cool. Right, so have you got a guest lined up for the next one? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be inviting David Cousins, um, who is a fantastic illustrator, um, and I'm really excited to have a chat with him, actually, because he's another one that we don't get to spend as much time with as we'd like. I agree. Um, but he's, um, he's fantastic. Um, he was actually the, the guy who gave me my first ever pu uh, published illustration when I was an illustrator. So, oh, really? uh, yeah, so it'd be really good to, uh, to bring him, him in and somewhat try and return that favor. Lovely. Now, I'm going to be totally transparent and tell, tell the viewers of this. There's not Views, is it? <laughs> uh, I, but uh, we're recording that one straight after this one. Yeah, um, it's the quick outfit change, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking I might be able to open another couple of cans, get them in my way. <laughs> so uh, be prepared if you're watching episode two that we might be a little more tipsy than we are already. <laughs> Tiggs, always a pleasure. I'll be talking to you again in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. <laughs>